With us, we have the district nurse, the head district nurse in charge of all things medical in and around the ABC Unified School District. Her name is Penny Goforth, and she's here with us today. Good Big round of applause for Penny. So, Penny, uh, first of all, you are an RN, a registered nurse, correct? Correct. Correct. And uh, uh, how long have you been a nurse for? I've been a nurse for about 30 years. Oh, wow. And uh, how long have you been working for the ABC Unified School District? ABC. I've enjoyed working here for 24 years. Oh, wow. So six years before that, you were in what kind of nursing capacity? I worked in Seal Beach as a school nurse and then worked in med surge um, in a hospital and also in oral surgery. So. Okay. But it seems like for most of your career, it's been, uh, most of your career has been involved in, in the school setting. Correct. Things. Wow. That's got to be pretty diverse as far as it's what you kind of see. Very diverse, yes. Wow. Well, um, as you know, because you were a judge of this uh, contest here for the H1N1 flu, yes. and uh, kind of a, a video that uh, students would put together, and 60 seconds or less. And the whole point of it was to really kind of probably spread awareness for ways to prevent the disease and kind of the, the things that a person can do to help uh, protect themselves and protect other people. I think there was a... Uh, an award given, the Nurses Award, that was given to a video. And what was that given for? That was given for the most accurate information regarding the flu and how to decrease your spread, the risk of spreading the flu. Okay. So the material was the most accurate. And, and the ones that we have seen uh, on the show so far, the, those are ones that just kind of won best overall, which would probably include entertainment value as Correct. well as the right. content. Right, awesome. right. The content did have to have some pretty accurate information, so, but the, the acting and, and other areas were considered too for their awards. Oh, great. So now, um, when, when the news kind of broke, I guess probably uh, maybe a year, 18 months ago, about the possibility nationwide of you know, an epidemic, um, what was kind of the things that, the, that ABC was doing to to protect the students and, and the workers and everything. How did they kind of right. treat that initially? In April of last year was when the first case of H1N1 um, hit the news. Mm -hmm. And as uh, we could see that it would progress in such a fa fashion that we weren't um, aware of how it would progress. We didn't have a vaccine for it. Um, so we didn't know how many people were going to get sick with it. So at the district level, there our concerns were if we had an increased number of students that got sick, mm -hmm. staff got sick, you know, that we wouldn't need to continue our education um, in the school setting. So a lot of planning needed to be implemented in working with our agencies to determine how we would handle increased absences due to the flu. Right. And then what, what, what kind of things were the individual school site nurses doing to kind of keep the, uh, the situation as calm and as normal and, and from getting out of hand? Were there kind of specific measures that they were a part of? The nurses were very um, uh, much a part of education. Education has been a big part um, district-wide as well as at the school level by the nurses, of educating people how to decrease their risk of transmitting the virus, how to protect themselves by getting vaccinated for the virus, um, staying home when they're sick, mm. um, and cleaning the environment. We're implementing cleaning techniques that um, have been become more stringent this year because of the flu, um, and also working with public agencies to um, determine whether or not we are seeing an increase in number of students that are out sick. That was a, a, just a very impactful job for nurses to oh, sure. monitor the number of um, absences due to the flu. Does it seem like that the projections from past April have been below or above or by, right about what they expected at this point now? At this point, um, we are seeing a decrease in the number of cases of flu, mm -hmm. and that's seasonal and H1N1. Um, in October, we saw a, a, a big increase in right. H1N1. There was kind of a spike. And exactly. It... Um, and that's not a typical flu season because right. March is our peak time for right. the flu. Um, so th things have 
slowed down somewhat in regards to the number of cases that are have been identified. Well, I would hope with the education aspect that people are being more cognizant of, you know, washing their hands more regularly and using hand sanitizer and making sure that when they're not feeling well, they're not putting other people at risk by coming to school. All those right. little things probably make a difference on a larger scale. Is it still too late if someone was thinking, well, you know, it's, it's already past it, you know, I, I don't need to get the vaccine. Should people still go and get the vaccine? People should still get the vaccine um, because, again, we haven't hit the peak season. Mm -hmm. And so we, the public health department is still encouraging people to go to their, their private physician, the pharmacies. In fact, the public health department has contacted us to possibly maybe have another clinic here in the district to, oh, to help our families be protected against the flu. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show thank and for informing me and in, in our uh, audience about so many things, especially with our own health. So uh, with that, we got the show rolling right along here, so stick around. <laughs>